Hi everybody, welcome back to Collecting Canadian Cavalry and Armour. Today, we're going to look at regimental histories. Why? I got to tell you guys, especially if you're into collecting badges or the uniforms or everything, these books are a wealth of information about how the uniforms were actually worn. Because uh, with a lot of regiments, especially in the early days, the dress regulation said one thing, but regimental tradition says another thing. And sometimes you can get a good idea of when certain accoutrements in the uniforms change from one to another. So if you're trying to get a, a certain period with your uniforms that you're may, maybe putting together or that you have, you can double check things. It's so important. It really is. But just a quick public service announcement. For any of you guys that are still serving, when you're directing staff or your NCO say, don't jump off the armored vehicles because you're going to screw up your knees, they're absolutely right. I just had my second knee replacement done uh, about three days ago. And uh, so for you young guys, you may not say, well, that's okay. I'm tough. I can take it. I said that too when I was a young guy. But now I've got two new knees. Avoid that hassle. Anyway, back to the books. So I've got this very interesting one here on the Governor General's bodyguard. There's no photos in there, but there was some kind of neat artwork that you can see in here take a good look at the badges but as you go through these older books you really get a sense of what life was like within the regiment at the time now this particular book was written in 1876 by a guy named Dennison I hear he's pretty popular with the horse guards anyway wonderful books <clears throat> got this kind of thing here the Prince Edward Island light horse wonderful book it goes through all the different badges that the regiment wears now a lot of guys myself included, you'll find a badge, say one of the modern regiments, and you can draw down and with badges and explain the family tree, different amalgamations and everything else. So it makes for kind of a neat regimental family history. And books like this are so valuable. Right there, so valuable. Now, the probably the uh, one of the most important ones, the History of the Royal Canadian Armored Corps. Fabulous book for photos. Uh, you know, you can see where the different uh, badges and stuff were worn. I don't forget the cores was only formed in '36, so we don't have a heck of a lot of uh, history that way. But it does get back into uh, you know some of the early cavalry stuff. Okay, guys, we'll take a quick examination of the books that I have here, and this is uh, uh, I'm still I'm always looking for 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 more books. So if there's more armored stuff coming out, I like to pick it up. Because, you know, it's, uh, you can start cross-referencing different regiments, worked with each other. Anyway, let's get on. So we have this one here, 125 years of the 8th Canadian Hussars, up until 1973. Okay, good books. Got lots of information in there. And a couple of folks that I know, uh, Colonel Hofer and uh, Major McNorgan, they uh, wrote this one that takes you up into uh, 2023. Help to put my glasses on. Anyway, another fantastic book. Talks about the regiment. You got lots of uh, information in there about the different honors and awards, different stuff like that. Fantastic book. A Century of Service, South Alberta Light Horse, the old Sally Horse guys out there. Worked with a couple of guys before, wonderful guys, great regiment. Uh, the nice thing about this book. It's uh, very economical. I think I only paid about 30 or 35 bucks for it, which I think is a steal. They, uh, no, I didn't steal it. I actually paid for it. But <clears throat> And in here, they cover not only the South Alberta Light Horse, but a lot of the other Alberta regiments. The 19th Alberta Dragoons are in here, the South Alberta Regiment, because don't forget, the only VC won by the Armored Corps uh, was uh, major in the South Alberta uh, Regiment. So there we go. Anyway, all that information is in here. Fantastic stuff. Lots of photos. And again, definitely worth picking up. Uh, some wonderful color plates in there. So then we go over those guys that are hanging out in Toronto. Governor General's Horse Guards. Lots of history with these fellas, with these guys. Uh, said second to none. Uh, Regiments like to tease each other. Anyway, we have uh, lots of good photos in there. Again, fantastic. Lots of history. Uh, these, these newer 
history books that come out with lots of photos and, and this kind of thing. Fantastic. You really, for the collector, you get an idea of how things should have been. Which takes me to another sometimes controversial thing. Do you polish a badge or you don't polish the badge in your collection? Okay, I know a lot of people say, oh, you never polish the badge, don't polish the badge. But is that realistic? I've known many RSMs in my career and not one of them would allow anybody to come on parade with a dirty badge or badge that wasn't shined. So if you want authentic, the badges should be shined. Some people say, yeah, yeah, you're gonna ruin the badge if you do that. Bottom line is your collection, what do you want to do? That's the bottom line, guys. Anyway, 12th Manitoba Dragoons, we talked about these fellas uh, from out in, uh, out around Winnipeg. Saw the, sh uh, the saddle and everything else. And again, wonderful book and a regiment that sadly no longer exists. Oh, Fort Gary's out in Winnipeg. Good bunch of guys, both reserve and regular force service. They cover uh, all of all of that service. They even get into stuff like the old uh, 18th Manitoba Mounted Rifles. Uh, fantastic book. Lots of good information. Good, good information in there. And <clears throat> for my friends of the Royal Canadian Dragoons, into the second century. Uh, again by uh, Hofer and McNorgan. Fantastic book. Uh, covers a lot of the stuff uh, coming into, you know, like all the tours in, um, in Bosnia and, and Croatia and then into Afghanistan. Lots of friends in this book for me. So, like I said, guys, if you're going to be collecting, go to the source. Find the information. Find the photos. This is how it was really done. Uh, and you never know. You might be able to win an argument or two. Because, like I said, dress regulations are one thing. Militia units did something else. Back in the old days, it was all up to the colonel. So, guys, spend the money and take it trip to history by getting some of these wonderful books and the last one here that I, that I really haven't covered is always Strathcona uh, wonderful book on the Strathcona's horse uh, not a lot of photos but we do have paintings of the uniforms uh, again pretty good reference and uh, uh, wonderful history I mean these guys uh, still a wonderful regiment still around still serving Canada ever since the Boer War and before. Now, <clears throat> books like the Black Beret, the history of the Windsor Regiment. My old regiment, right, gives you an opportunity to take a look and say, well, what were these guys wearing when they did their first class of armored fighting vehicles? You can see who's wearing Black Berets and who isn't. Oh yeah, that would be the Essex Regiment tank. Also can fast forward and say, well, what are the guys, <clears throat> what are the kind of things are going? No. Get a good look at their Gidon party. Especially this handsome guy right there. Anyway, I'm just saying. These books are fantastic. The, the authors these days are going through old photos. And you can really get uh, a great set of reference photos uh, out of these books. Uh, highly recommended. Like this one of the 8th Hazars from back in the 1800s. That's, this is how the uniforms were worn. So if you want to make a decent display, right, you got to have the material, guys. you got to have it. Now, you can pick up these books anywhere from 30 bucks to maybe $150. Depends on the regiment and how much work went into it, you know, all that kind of thing. But it's so worth it. So when we went over the reference material for badges and that kind of thing, important. But so are these, especially if you're into the uniforms and some of the background behind the uniforms that you have. Like I said, it, you know, if you get something with uh, with a guy's name, bonus. Maybe he's in the book. In the Black Beret, everybody that's ever served in the Essex Regiment tank or the Windsor Regiment, their name is in this book. So you can actually look up, find their service number, find out when they joined, find out a little bit more about them. Fantastic. This came in handy one time. Picked up a khaki uniform. The guy's regimental number was inside. I was able to look it up, figure out who this guy was, and found some pictures of him training with the regiment. So when I display the uniform, I can display pictures of this cat right beside it. Awesome, man. Makes for a great display. Uh, so, yeah. Also, Christmas is coming up. 
that's why I'm wearing my shirt. It's a great idea for last minute gifts. So if you have a collector in mind, that'd be like, hmm, what do I get him? Or her. It's cool if chicks are collecting too, I like it. Get him a history book. Get him the Black Beret. Good book. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was probably a little quick. It's because the pain meds are wearing off and I have to go take another aspirin. Anyway, I hope you guys found this um, a pretty good suggestion, not only for reference material, but for gifts for your favorite collector. And uh, I hope you guys are out there waiting for Christmas, waiting for that, that new badge or that new book or whatever. Anyway, you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and happy collecting.